Yeah, excited about a, a great opportunity for our team. Uh, we obviously let one slip through our hands on on Saturday. Um, got to got to find a, a way to get our big guys involved offensively um, to, to give us some productive plays. And, uh, um, you know, but Kentucky's got a heck of a team once again, like they always do. And Cal's done what he always does, which is uh, take a team and make it better as the year goes on. And I think they're playing their best basketball of the year right now. Um, and uh, it's going to be a, a great challenge, but one that you got to be excited about. David? Morning, Frank. Thanks for doing this. Uh, a couple for you. One, with Josh Gray, is it a case of where he potentially could play with that soft cast, or what's, what's the deal there? Yeah, can he play? Yes. I, I didn't think it was fair to play him the other day. He tried, you know, he practiced, and uh, he, he never – never appeared comfortable in practice, not because of pain. I, I mean, you know, basketball is not a sport that you play on the ground. You, you tend to jump and he's a shot blocker and a rebounder. Uh, if his legs get taken from him again, imagine having to put your arm down to break your fall and you got a cast on it. Um, he just didn't appear comfortable. Uh, uh, you know, he was in good spirits and, and he, he wanted to play. I made the decision uh, not to throw him out there. Uh, I, I think he'll be more at peace at practice today. And uh, I hope to, to maybe throw him out there a little bit uh, so he can. His ball screen defense is the best on our team from the big spot. So it's uh, uh, we got to figure that Kentucky ball screens a lot. So we have to figure out a way to, uh, to, to neutralize their ball screen coverage. And also, you mentioned in post game and just now about the the lack of production from the big guys. I mean, not to, to sound uh, you know obvious here, but how big of a concern is that when you have to try to stop Oscar Shibwe? Yeah, I, I you know I don't know if it's a concern. Um, our big guys, uh, you know, they they screen uh, for the most part. They play pretty good post defense. Um, we're just getting nothing offensively from our bigs right now. It's uh, and when I mean the bigs, I'm not just talking about Wildens. I'm talking about everyone that's playing at the four and the five. Uh, we're getting nothing offensively uh, from those spots. AJ Wilson seems to be playing a little better as of late. Uh, he gave us some moments in the Tennessee game offensively, uh, but uh, but we 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 need more from those spots. And uh, you know, it's my job to, to to figure out a way to to uh, scheme. Uh, a way to, to create some opportunities for those guys to, to get better shots and, and, and make themselves feel better so they can be more engaged and more aggressive when they play. Colin? Yeah, Frank, just what did you see from your team? I guess you guys probably would have practiced yesterday. What did you see from them yesterday, and what do you want to see from them today to feel comfortable about their preparation and their mindset going into tomorrow night? Yeah, I mean, we were a little uh, physically – little beat up yesterday uh, that, you know, Tennessee's a real physical team and, uh, and they, they screen you. So that means that they're always hitting you. And <coughs> I know a lot of folks uh, don't comprehend uh, the physicality that exists in a basketball game when you play against a team like Tennessee, uh, because they don't just kind of play dribble drive and everyone stand around and watch a guy with the ball. They, it is nonstop movement and nonstop contact. And then on the rebound, you know, every time they shoot it, it's a war on the glass. And uh, so that, that kind of game takes a toll on you. But our spirits were good. Our minds were good. Uh, I expect to have a real good practice today and be ready to go against Kentucky. Matt Dow. Hey, Frank, uh, you spoke about how Cal's team is getting better and better as the season goes on and they're playing their best basketball right now. What have you seen that they are doing that Kentucky is doing so well to get them to back in the top five in the country? Yeah, they, they just, you know, they, it's typical what Cal Perry does. Yeah. You know, it's uh, everyone always wants to talk about his one and dones. And it was as if I could have gone out there in my Toyota. Hello? Yeah, I, I was saying that, you know, Cal gets all this publicity for the one and dones and all that stuff. And I get it. Uh, they've got really good freshmen, uh, but he always brings those guys together. And as the year goes on, 
They get better defensively. They create more of a personality offensively. And I think you're starting to see that again. Uh, Ty Ty Washington's a special player. Uh, and, and, you know, when he's healthy, they've been pretty good. You know, the games that he's missed because of the ankle injury, that's when they've kind of uh, had some moments where maybe they didn't play as well offensively. But uh, uh, Davion Mintz is an older player. Uh, 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 you know, Wheeler's been around the block, and he's a dynamic, aggressive point guard. Uh, sheboy has been around for a while, and, you know, even though he wasn't in Kentucky the whole time, uh, but he's been around for a while, and he's, he's a load in there. Um, you know, Toppin's been around forever. Uh, Ro- uh, Keon Brooks has been around. I think this is his third year. So, if you, 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 you know, Brady's a fifth-year player. You actually pay attention to the guys that are playing. They're older players. And, uh, uh, and, and he's, he's brought them together and that's, that's what makes them uh, a tough, tough team to play this time of year. Alex Jones. Williams was playing well in non-conference play. It's kind of seen his production fall coming into conference play. Just what have you seen from him? That's kind of caused him to struggle lately. Uh, the opposition is pretty good. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, it's just, it is what it is. It's, uh, um, you know, for for big guys to, to play well, your point guard play has to be consistent. And our point guard play has been up and down. We got dudes that are really trying. Uh, two of them are true freshmen. And and it's, you know, it, when you play true freshmen at point and you play in the SEC, uh, it's not going to be – it's a roller coaster ride. You got peaks and valleys. And and then Jermaine, who had been playing well and then just didn't, I don't just didn't didn't have a very good game against Tennessee. Uh, we need him to play better. We need him to play well. And when if you connect the dots on our team, when Jermaine plays well, we tend to play well. And uh, you know, it's very important that that he have a good practice today and, and is in good spirits and uh and then goes out there and, and contributes uh, uh against Kentucky. And then, you know, whenever Whenever your point guard plays well, your bigs tend to play better. And it's kind of uh, – it's a connection that always takes place. Jerry Tipton? Yeah, Frank, I wonder how uh, Lavec is playing for you guys. Uh, you know, Jerry, he's, he's, uh, he's not playing great, um, but it's not for a lack of effort and lack, lack of desire. Um, uh, he's, he struggled rebounding the basketball, um, which when you go against Oscar, uh, I don't need him to, you know, go tit for tat with Oscar on the glass. I just need him to put his body on Oscar and make sure that, that he doesn't get a rebound. Um, um, you know, but he, he, uh, we need him to play better. It, it's, uh, the two things that have completely tied at the hip with our team is when Cousinard and Levesque uh, play solid offensively, we got a really good chance to win. And, and we need those two guys. Uh, Levesque needs to play better offensively. He's not played well offensively in a while. Um, probably since the Vanderbilt and Vanderbilt game, he has not played well uh, offensively. And uh, um, you know, so we, we got to figure out a way to help. It's because it's not for a lack of desire, not for a lack of care. And I wonder, too, Kentucky, as you know, they got Oscar in the middle. They got Grady shooting threes. Uh, Keon Brooks has come on. You got Savir. How tough is it to defend a team that has so many options? Yeah, it's, it, and they're, it's not just options, but they're old options. You know, it, it, it's a, think about it. Ty Ty Washington's a special player. I saw him in high school, special player. And he's, he's done special things at Kentucky but he doesn't have the burden of winning on his shoulders. Uh, Severe Wheeler deals with all the playmaking. Uh, you got Mintz and, and, you know, Grady, two guys have been in college. I think they've been playing since I was at Kansas state and, and, you know, and th- they have tremendous personality and, and, and discipline and consistency and they're both shot makers. Um, you know, then you got Brooks and you got top and, 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 you know, Lance Ware goes in there and gives them a great, great minutes of energy when he's in there. Oscar's an older player. You got a lot of older guys in there uh, that really, really understand how to play and what it takes to win a league game over 40 minutes. And, and that's that's a thing that makes him really, really hard to deal with. Thank you. 
Michael and Anna? <clears throat> Frank, Frank, it seemed like uh, in the first half uh, the other day, Minot was showing, you know, so, some good things, some scoring ability near the rim, things like that. Just curious, kind of what has he shown? What's his development been like? I know conditioning has been a big thing for him, but where is he kind of on his journey right now? Yeah, it's not it's not so much conditioning uh, anymore. He is in like way better shape than he's ever been. Um, uh, he has that ability. I mean, you saw him kind of catch the ball and make a layup, which you weren't alone. I jumped out of my seat because I haven't seen that from one of our bigs in a while. Uh, just a simple catch and layup, and, um, and and he can do that for us. Uh, defensively, he's got to be, you know, a, a lot more competitive, for lack of better words. Uh, um, you know, that we had a lead late in the first half, and we gave up the lead because they put him in a ball screen, and he did not defend the ball screen the right way on back-to-back plays. Um, and, you know, he's got to be – and and that's a, a – that's, that's a, a – um, that's a responsibility from the bigs. That's very important because, you know, Michael, it's real simple. You play a team like Tennessee that screens and they hit you when they screen you and you're the guard and I'm the big and my guy comes up and knocks you upside the head and I don't call the screen and then I don't give you the support. That's deflating that, that you then don't want to defend with the same enthusiasm that you need to defend and, and, and that's where he's got to get a lot better. He's, he's not as consistent as he needs to be in those kind of plays and, and, and those deflating plays. Um, it's not just a mistake that happens in the moment. It's, it's a deflating play that then doesn't give you the fervor that you need to deal with the physicality of that moment. And, uh, and, and, and that's where he's got to get a lot better for us. Mike Cuba. Frank, we talked about it after the game the other day, about the end of the day, you know, just being able to, to score. With you over the years of coaching, have you noticed a difference with maybe some of the younger guys in, in terms of how you approach them, maybe even pr- in practice, um, if their confidence isn't there from a scoring standpoint? Because obviously you guys have a lot of upperclassmen and they've gone through funks and parts, parts of their career. But have you had to maybe talk to them a little bit differently than the upperclassmen or is it kind of the same way you, you feel like? Well, we've got. Just like everyone else in the country, got a lot of first year players, whether they're older or, or freshmen. And, um, you know, so you, you, you cannot be as uh, 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 you can't pressure them from a demand standpoint the way you would if you got older players, uh, because they're all still trying to figure it out. That's number one. Number two, uh, if you're going to beat top 20 teams in the country, you got to score. All right. I'll give you a simple example with the same teams, same two teams, including us uh, over the years. My third year here, uh, we played Texas A&M. They were top 20 in the country. They had Daniel House. They had this other guy who's also an NBA guy. And we had Sindarius and, and, you know, he was a sophomore and Dwayne was a sophomore and uh, Michael was a junior. And we went nose to nose they beat us like 55 to 48 or something like that. I couldn't have been prouder of that team, but at the same time, I was crushed after the game because we shot 29% from the field and it was hard to do. Well, if you hit fast forward, the same two teams played a and M came in again, top 20 in the country. And actually we went there and they're, they're top 10, if I'm not mistaken, And now those guys are a year older and we scored 78 or something like that. And we beat them. If you're going to beat top 20 teams in the country, you have to score. You've got to make shots. And, and if you shoot 30% from the field, that's not going to get it done. And and that's unfortunately, that's what happened to us the other night. Colin. Yep. Frank, just two for you with so much inconsistency at the point guard spot and at the four and the five, do you look to shake up a starting lineup at all going into this Kentucky game? And and secondly, just what can you do from a schematic standpoint um, to really scheme up maybe the bigs and the point guards to have more of an impact offensively? Well, from a schematic standpoint, that's my job. And, and, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to make an about face from who we've been because it's not like we're failing miserably. We're a good team. Uh, we, we, we had a bad second half the other day, uh, uh, but I do have to figure out how to be more helpful for those two places at the point guard and at the center. Um, 
um, you know, from a starting lineup standpoint, I, I don't think that's the biggest part. I mean, you know, we were up two with two minutes to play in the first half against, you know, one of the top 20 teams in the country the other day. It's, I don't, I, it's not a question of, of uh, the guys playing or just, yeah, no, it's, I, I can't make it any clearer. I'm depending on two freshman point guards. That's really hard, but they're, they come in and they work their tails off. They deserve me being in their corner. And, and then Jermaine, who's unfortunately had a very difficult year and he had been playing well, but didn't play well against Tennessee. And uh, we just need those three guys to come in here and be good today and be ready to go tomorrow.